Hi friends, welcome back for chapter 10 of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Chapter 10, the family begins to starve. During the next two weeks, the weather turned very cold. First came the snow. It, became, it came, began very suddenly one morning, just as Charlie Bucket was getting dressed for school. Standing by the window, he saw huge flakes drifting slowly out over an icy sky that was the color of steel. By evening, it lay four feet deep around the tiny house, and Mr. Bucket had to dig a path from the front door to the road. After the snow, there came a freezing gale that blew for days and days without stopping, and oh, how bitter cold it was. Everything that Charlie touched seemed to be made of ice, and each time he stepped outside, the wind was like a knife on his cheeks. Inside the house, little jets of freezing air came rushing in through the sides of the windows and under the doors. There was no place to go to escape them. The four old ones lay silent and huddled in their bed, trying to keep the cold out of their bones. The excitement over the golden tickets had long since been forgotten. Nobody in the family gave a thought now to anything except for the two vital problems, trying to keep warm and trying to get enough to eat. There is something about very cold weather that gives one an enormous appetite. Most of us find ourselves beginning to crave rich steaming stews and hot apple pies and all the delicious warming dishes because we are all a great deal luckier than we realize. We usually get what we want or near enough, but Charlie Bucket never got what he wanted because his family couldn't afford it. And as cold as the weather went on and on, he became ravenously and desperately hungry. Both bars of candy, the birthday one and the Grandpa Joe one had bought, had long since been nibbled away. And all he got now were those three thin, cabbagey meals three times a day. Then all at once, the meals became even thinner. The reason for this was the toothpaste factory, the place where Mrs. Buck Mr. Bucket worked, suddenly went bust and had to close down. Quickly, Mr. Bucket tried to get another job, but he had no luck. In the end, the only way he managed to earn a few pennies was by shoveling snow in the streets. But it wasn't enough to buy even a quarter of the food that seven people needed. The situation was be became desperate. Breakfast was a single slice of bed bread for each person now, and lunch maybe half a boiled potato. Slowly but surely, everyone in the house began to starve. And every day, little Charlie Bucket, trudging through the snow on his way to school, would have to pass Mr. Willy Wonka's giant factory. And every day, as he came near it, he would lift his small pointed nose high in the air and sniff the wonderful smells of melting chocolate. Sometimes he would stand motionless outside the gates for several minutes on end, taking deep, shallow breaths as though he were trying to eat the smell itself. That child, said Grandpa Joe, poking his head from under the blanket one icy morning, that child has got to have more food. It doesn't matter about us. We're too old to bother with. But a growing boy, he can't go on like this. He's beginning to look like a skeleton. What can one do? murmured Grandma Josephine miserably. He refuses to take ours. I hear his mother tried to slip her own piece of bread onto his plate at breakfast this morning, and he wouldn't touch it. He made her take it back. He's a fine little fellow, said Grandpa George. He deserves better than this. The cruel weather went on and on, and every day Charlie Bucket grew thinner and thinner. His face became so frighteningly white and pinched, the skin was drawn so tightly over his cheeks that you could see the shapes of his bones underneath. It seemed doubtful whether he could go on much longer like this without becoming dangerously ill. And now, very calmly, with that curious wisdom that seems to come so often to small children in times of hardship, he began to make little changes here and there in some of the things that he did so that he could save strength. In the mornings, he left the house 10 minutes earlier so that he could walk slowly to school without ever having to run. He sat quietly in the classroom during recess, resting himself while the others rushed out store doors and threw snowballs and rustled in the snow. Everything he did now, he did slowly and carefully to prevent exhaustion. Then one afternoon, walking back home with the icy wind in his face and incidentally feeling hungrier than he ever felt before, his eye 
was caught suddenly by a piece of paper that was lying in the gutter, in the snow. The paper was of greenish color, and there was something vaguely familiar about it. Charlie stepped off the curb and bent down to examine it. Part of it was buried under the snow, but he saw at once what it was. It was a dollar bill. Quickly, he looked around him. Had someone just dropped it? No, that was impossible because it was part of the way buried. Several people went hurrying on past him in the sidewalk. Their chins sunk deep into the collars of their coats, their feet crunching the snow. None of them was searching for any money. None of them was taking the slightest notice to the small boy crouching in the gutter. Then was it his? The dollar? Could he have it? Carefully, Charlie pulled it out from under the snow. It was damp and dirty, but otherwise perfect. A whole dollar. He held it tightly, tightly between his shivering fingers, gazing down at it. It meant one thing to him at the moment, only one thing. It meant food. Automatically, Charlie turned and began moving toward the nearest shop. It was only 10 paces away. It was the newspaper and stationery store, the kind that sells almost everything, including candy and cigars. And what he would do, he quickly whispered to himself, he would buy one luscious bar of candy and eat it all up, every bit of it, right there and then, and then give the rest of the money he would take back straight away home and give to his mother. And that is chapter 10 of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Have a great day, friends, and be kind.